and it's a big one. I think it's one that we hear probably all the time. Um, and it, it is it is the one about candidates. So we hear it. I, I we probably had like what thousands of comments about this, and I think it's really fair concern, right? Because we've come we've come out saying hey, we're trying to get someone to president of the office. Who are we getting to office? But I think what we've really identified in this podcast is that first, before anything, we have to build this groundswell. We have to show people how to kind of operate and, and, and how, you know, what nuanced discussion looks like and kind of helping reframe these important messages of unity. But at some point, we're going to have to try and suggest and offer our candidates. And so I know a lot is in the works that we really can't really talk about. It. But I would love to hear your, your, your guys' thoughts about what an ideal unity candidate looks like. Let's start with Alex. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, there's the three criteria, right? And I want to, I've been thinking a lot about them because I think they're important to unpack because there's so many meanings we ascribe to words um, and unpacking them is always the right way to get to sense make what that meaning is. So there's capable, courageous, and patriotic, right? Mm -hmm. So I, and I would open this up to a discussion. It's not just my opinion, but from my own research, you know, Highly capable means someone who is able to have a good view of the landscape around them, look at all of the different options in front of them, and make a clear decision um, and move forward with that decision. And um, to, to quote um, Napoleon Hill, who's a, a philosopher and thinker of um, success and, and um, capability, he says that, you know, great leaders make decisions very quickly and change them very slowly. Mm. And that's one criteria of capability. Another one is to make a decision that actually solves the problem that you're trying to fix. So if we have a president who, you know, sees that poverty is an issue, but makes a decision that actually harms the impoverished people, that's not very capable. He, he's actually creating, you know, dissent and discord within his own population. Um, so there's a lot of nuance to that, that idea of capability and it's easy, important to unpack that. And that we know there are people who can do that. There are people who can think in the interest of a broad company um, of a broad group of people and, and move forward on a, on a clear decision. Um, and that brings you to courageous and courageous is being able to do that even in the face of, you know, special interests or yeah. people who, you know, might want to do something to harm you or um, keep you from making the decision that's in the interests of the general population. And then patriotic, I think, is a lot of what we've been talking to here, which is just that recognition that out of many, one, like it's written behind you, Chris, and um, yeah, and it's kind of being able to say, you know, each individual is, is important in this country and important to the success of this country, and we need to band together and, and and bring out what's best in every individual. So I think those criteria really say it all, and and you can go and that I'm just giving little snippets. You could probably we could probably have a whole hour conversation about just those three those three criteria. I'm curious, you know, one of the things you bring up there, I think, is so important. Uh, just actually in, in people in general, right? It's having that humility to recognize, oh, hey, I really care about something and I thought of an idea and it totally didn't work, right? Um, I, I you know classically right now you see, you see the Trump administration trying to dwindle down COVID cases, right? To try and kind of not make sure, you know, we don't want to see the ballooning cases, so we're going to kind of stop and, and reduce our um, COVID-19 tests. And that's insane because... COVID-19 is still happening, right? And just by not measuring tests doesn't mean it's going to stop. And I think that's a great example of the need for humility, right? Recognizing, hey, I made a mistake. It's okay. And, you know, I'm going to now correct. And I think politically that seems like political suicide. But I guarantee you, so many Americans, if they saw the president get up and be like, hey, I'm really sorry. We made a mistake. We're now going to be doing X, Y, and Z, and we've already started doing it. And here's our here's our transition. I think if you had that transparency, people would love that. Yeah, and that's hugely courageous to be able to do that. Huge, yeah. absolutely, and it's not easy, but we need it. Chris, yeah, that, how about that's you? actually an interesting example. Um, 
So I think what Alex was saying in terms of the characteristics that any sort of candidate that we would draft um, for this, spot on. Um, so I'll just speak to, I think, some of the process that uh, we've been discussing in terms of actually executing on getting a candidate. So yeah. um, part of that, the, the campfires uh, will be using uh, different software that exists for eliciting comments and feedback and voting. And uh, using those systems as a way of getting polling in order, and we'll describe sort of uh, additional characteristics that we think a good candidate looks like uh, mm -hmm. to help sort of help people make decisions around who they want to support. And we're going to have an open sort of poll and have people sort of state what they think, drive that conversation. And then we're looking at probably um, a short sort of uh, primary process. Uh, on a specific uh, online platform uh, they're, they're making sort of like final decisions on. And um, that primary process mm -hmm. will be, cool, this, this will be uh, who's chosen for the Unity platform. And then, uh, and, and those are our candidates and that's what it'll look like. And we're looking to do that um, in a very quick turnaround, sort of a fast timeline here. Uh, given the reality of uh, mail-in ballots and that those ballots go mm -hmm. out before November, right? So yeah. um, we're in high gear to get this going. I think and it's great you bring that up because I, I, one of the things I want to do when we end is like tell people, hey, if you're interested in supporting us and helping it and even kind of informing part of that process, where do you go? And we'll, defi we'll definitely plug that toward the end of the conversation. And it's also super reflective of the volunteer-based structure that we have, right? We're trying to collaboratively identify um, these, uh, these traits and characteristics. But I want to definitely keep going off yeah. of Alex's point. Because I like the discussion of talking about um, these three core points, right? Uh, yep. and, and what do they actually mean broadly? So I don't know, Alex, if you had a, re a response to what Chris was saying. Um, yeah, I, so a couple of things come to mind. I, I think that first, everyone involved in this in this movement, in some way, needs to embody those those three principles. Mm. Um, and I think that's what we've been doing a really great job of coming together around in our volunteer organization, um, and it, it continues to be more and more vital, especially if we start getting into some kind of voting procedure um, over over the um, where we're discussing and, and creating a consensus. Um, if we can each embody those characteristics, and uh, sometimes, like we were saying, that's the courage to say, "Okay, the majority rules," and and I'm going to keep sticking with this, um, even even though it's not what I agree with. And, and also patriotic, right? That's very right very patriotic and um so yeah i think that, that that's really important yeah. um the other thing is not to get too like um into the the deep future but if we're able to bring together people in this way in this forum over the internet and create a polling system where we're actually able to create consensus um there might be iterations of that into the future but we're, we're doing, if we're able to do that, we're doing something really huge yeah. um, in terms of learning to communicate and coordinate people from very diverse backgrounds um, through a common forum over the internet and not in person, which probably as our society becomes increasingly globalized will be um, more and more and more important. Um, I think we're probably one of, I mean, what has to be one of the first uh, movement slash campaigns that are is completely a hundred percent run digitally right now, right? I mean, I, I can't think of one that's been because right. I know. I mean, you guys are all in California. I'm over by New York, so um, we definitely. It's pretty cool, I think, in terms of the tech innovation. We are again going back to our first point. We're trying to use this digital ecosystem to our advantage to promote the unity ideas. Um, but I, I really like your point too. It's like, look, if we want to create this really complex movement that supports these ideas, we as individuals also have to embody those ideas. Otherwise, there's no way it can possibly build up. And so what do you, I'm curious, when you talk to individuals on your teams or maybe personally, 
those three traits, being courageous, you know, capable, patriotic, those are really hard. Those are not, those do not come instinctively to some people, I'd say a lot of people. So what do you try to do to embody those? Could you give some suggestions or tips maybe you've used or you've seen other people use to embody those really important traits? Um, yeah. Um, I'll let you go, Alex. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, I think one of the one of the key things is um, one of the ways we defined what a leader looks like uh, within the unity uh, movement of volunteers is just demonstrating value and being helpful whenever possible. So if you're if you're going to ask someone to do something and delegate out work, you should be willing to do it yourself if if it comes to that, right? Um, so yeah. just a willingness to do the work is is one and. In, it might just be that it works out that you can delegate it to someone else that can do it just fine or better or whatever. Right. But, um, it's, it's the attitude behind it. That is, I think really key there. Um, and just trying to help each other cause we're all in this together, right? Like we have to have each other's yeah. backs. And I, and I think with those two things, um, you get all the sort of other emergent, uh, qualities you're looking for. Right. It's this idea of servant leadership, um, which is sort of common or like pretty popular among the sort of like uh, project management, program management sort of circles and uh, different sort of like agile frameworks. Um, it's this idea of servant leadership. Um, and, yeah. and I think that's what we're trying to do. Uh, one thing I just want to highlight um, that I think is very important about what the unity platform stands for and uh, around the conversation around candidates is it structurally is different, right? It's saying we are, we are putting yeah, a structure yeah. in the office of a presidency that is about conversation, right? And having the viewpoints uh, well represented and this idea of steel manning, I think is very important there. Mm. Um, so, so when people are talking about like, Oh, what are the candidates going to be? It's going to be, well, they're going to represent more of what the American people believe in because it's, it's actually two different people that are representing these ideas, right? It's not just one person yeah. and then, you know, they're clone essentially, which is how uh, the VP pick is right now, right? It's basically a clone that can sort of capture a different demographic, right? And we're saying, well, no, you can actually use that position to represent a deeper ideal, uh, and, and I think that is very important to do. And that's something structurally we're doing here. So um, we have co-leads um, for each of sort of the working groups to, to drive at this, right? We really want to um, have a sense of consensus is being built and disseminated um, across the organization as decisions are getting made. And we have this idea that like if a lead needs to make a decision and time is of importance, that happens too. So we are incorporating the idea of structures in our platform within our own movement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think, well, I have a, just an addition to what you say, Chris, about um, kind of the leadership from, from a giving perspective. And I think that actually what we're doing with, with that um, is going to be, increasingly fundamental to how our society um, works into the future. We're, as we kind of know, especially in this space, we're approaching this fourth industrial revolution where um, automation is going to rapidly accelerate. And a lot of people are going to, in some way or another, become less essential uh, to a lot of the, the base jobs that we have. And, and that brings with it hopefully policies like universal basic income, but it also brings with it a real need for um, what humans can provide, which is yeah. care and innovation and um, kind of that intrinsic creative value that we have. And, and what that will mean is that we need to each stand up and, and give to society at large, the people around us and, and create that um, value or, or, um, something that's from our own like being. And so mm -hmm. that's definitely something that I've tried to embody 
um, in this in this movement. And I've seen a lot of our uh, definitely all of our volunteers and everyone in leadership has done that in a huge way, and it's it's really inspiring. Um, and then further than that, I would just say that um, in order to embody those kind of qualities, is just just listening, just hearing who other people are. Um, and it's it's been actually fascinating how we've been able to do that. Having never met any of, I've never met either of you. I've never right. met anybody who's involved in this movement. And just through all of us being able to really listen and yeah. hear what people are trying to say and find common ground, um, like Chris is saying, we really have been able to 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 grow in a really unique way and um, and change that structure of how we're doing things, and, that, and that's really cool.